do a little, uh, little test on this new microphone I got. Um, and I'm curious to see what the difference is now, but a um, little bit of an upgrade since probably since some of the last uh, videos, you know. Um, I, uh, these Aristas are back to front air, so the air is coming right in my face. Um, so I'm really curious to see what the sound quality is on this thing. Um, we've added in uh, two, uh, well you only see one, but there's another one um, over on my shelf. Uh, the problem I was running into is I got a bunch of, cop not a bunch, I got some copper based stuff. Our management network up here is on a Juniper EX2200. Um, and then I just put in a, uh, a little uh, Super Micro 8 core system. We've run some uh, testing and some Prox Proxmox virtual machines. Um, and uh, got another server down there for a customer. So what's. Uh, we got our 100 gig switch in the next room, and that's bringing over these 40 gig, uh, 4x10 four, four uh, AOC. Um, what I did is I just took, I'm only using two of the four, so I went ahead and I took number three, and I just put her down in this guy, and that brings over a, a legacy network straight to this switch. And then I got a, uh, looks like a, um, a 10 gig DAC cable. And I went ahead, I came out of this switch to go to the switch for our new network. So this thing's fully ready to go. I just got to get uh, OSPF set up on it. Um, scaling, uh, power, it's a little more difficult. And what we're running into right now is uh, these things that I rebuilt, um, they're freaking nice, they're expensive, but they can only do so much. Uh, this runs... Um, two Aristas for about an hour. Um, doesn't really help me. I mean, an hour, if I'm in the middle of something, I can't even get here in an hour. Um, so we got two of them, and I went ahead and I set it, I, set, I got it set up pretty good so that um, I can squeeze about two hours uh, out of it with a couple settings on the routers. Uh, power, the Dell, um, Dells have a bunch of cool power uh, related things. So, the solution. Um, went ahead, got this pretty beefy rack uh, set up, um, and we are going to be, uh, just got this mounted to the wall. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I think this is an Australian company. I gotta fact check that. Um, but, it's pretty cool. Um, I went ahead and I got this, uh, I call it, we call it Greenfield. Not, it's like flexible metallic tubing um, to connect uh, our, our line, our load uh, to this system. And we're going to also take about 12 to tw or 20 to 30 amps of solar and hook onto this to extend our battery life. Um, the goal uh, is I'm going to come into this with a 30 amp circuit. Um, I gotta check on that. I think it actually can do 40 amps at 120 volt. Um, so we're gonna come in with probably with 30 and we'll leave with 30. Um, I'll just check, but I, I don't wanna even put more than 30 on it. If it's rated for 40, 30 is fine. Um, here in the US, to jump from 30 to 40, everything gets a lot more expensive, like the breakers, the everything. Um, and this is a 48 volt battery system. Uh, so we are going to be coming out uh, right there, um, right out of that, down, and I'm going to put three, uh, well, what I, what I did was, this uh, rack is a eight foot tall rack, uh, and it said it could do a thousand pounds on each shelf. So what I did was, I just made it a four foot version uh, instead, and then I took the racks and every, uh, this rack, and that rack are doubled up. And the one on the bottom, I think we're just going to use for storage anyway. Um, so we're going to get some uh, AGM uh, aggregated glass mat batteries. Now, I know you're going to ask, why not get lithium? Well, if you look on the map of where we're located, um, I would prefer 
the aggregated glass mat or a deep cycle marine battery or something of those lines because if my battery was to fail, um, I can unbolt it, I can pick it up, I can drive one mile and I can replace it under warranty and come back, put my new battery in. Um, with lithium, yes, it's going to probably be more efficient, a bunch of it lighter, it's got a bunch of benefits, but I can't just go replace it today. Um, now this is a 48 volt system, so I'm going to take 12, I mean uh, four 12 volt batteries to make that 48 volt. Um, and if one battery fails, then that bank is, is failed. So I'm going to have a minimum of two banks to test uh, with. So we're going to have eight batteries um, uh, running uh, the system. And we're going to test that to see what, what it'll do. Now, back at the rack, um, what I'm, we're going to do is uh, actually um, I've got uh, 30, 30 amp, 30 amp, 120 amp. Um, and right now, the, uh, uh, the 20 amp um, is sh basically straight line power. Um, and then each one of those 30s is hooked to a battery at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is actually remove one of those batteries out of service temporarily. I'm going to pipe in uh, a conduit back to here, and I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna take that over to our panel. And through it, I'm gonna run um, four number 10s and two number, and one number 12. And two number 12s, I guess, I don't know. Um, and I'm gonna basically take our line power out of here, send it over, uh, come back out of that system, come back over to here, and then up and connect to um, my 120 volt, um, uh, so basically I'm going to replace one of these with, it's, right now it's 30, it's line power, but it goes down to this battery. I'm going to replace one of those with actually going to be a battery circuit. Um, and then I'm going to come out of that to, uh, to uh, one really big 30 amp power um, uh, strip um, PDU, couldn't think of the term. Um, my favorite part of this, to be honest with you, um, is, oh man, I just, uh, uh, my favorite part of this is the ability to add as many batteries as you want. So I'm gonna take, uh, this is a pure sign inverter. Um, so it does run a 60 hertz cycle um, and it can shift, uh, um, it, it can r roll power from the inverter in 10 milliseconds is what they say. So I'm curious to see, uh, that's less than a uh, 60 Hertz uh, in a cycle. So it would be one, uh, one tenth of a hurt. I don't know, something like that. It's less than an entire cycle. So it should be seamless on uh, typical equipment. Um, uh, so we'll have to see. We're going to do some testing on that. So I don't know if this is going to be a long-term battery approach, and I'm still going to need these batteries to give me um, uh, that seamless switch. But I think this, from what I've read, this thing is going to be able to switch over without anything knowing, uh, which is really what I'm looking for. So. Tomorrow, I'm going to go pick up eight, uh, eight batteries and we're going to wire them in series. Uh, it'll be the four wired in series, four wired in series, and then parallel between. Uh, yeah, I think that's correct. So uh, just a little, uh, little update. Um, this makes more, oh, then we're going to actually be coming out of this right here for um, photovoltaic input. PV or solar. So we'll basically come into this um, and I think we're going to throw, we're going to figure out the load um, in which this uses power um, just to stay on with no load. So let's say uh, if it uses like one amp, 
half an amp or something just to stay running, then we're gonna try to double that with solar. So if this uses half an amp, I wanna make sure that I can at least get uh, two amps or something worth of input back onto um, uh, the system. So I'm hoping this actually saves us a little bit of money, um, but this will be a test for our new pop. Now our new pop uh, is gonna be, it's about double the size of this room and it's about 30, uh, about 35 miles away. And um, there we're gonna try to go really, um, really crazy on the solar panels. Maybe try to get uh, the full 60 amps worth of solar uh, plugged into this. So this has a 60 amp uh, MPPT controller so it can take 60 amps worth of solar. And it also has a 40 amp um, charger for the battery. So if, for example, like if line power's hooked to it, it can only charge the batteries 40 amps. Um, but if solar's hooked to it also, it has a maximum of 100 amp uh, charge. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty stoked on this. Um, uh, did get a junction box cover. And what I think I'm gonna do uh, when, we wire, when I wire this joker up is um, uh, I'm gonna put a switch here, a uh, two pole double throw switch. Um, and what that is going to allow me to do, and then I'm gonna come out of the bottom here with an, uh, like a cord. So let's say we lose power. Um, line power is out and they, let's say they, the atom bomb dropped or some shit. So they say it's gonna be out for days. So we could actually come over here, I'll flip that double pull switch, it's a safety switch. And then I'll hook uh, extension cord to the bottom and I'll run that out to our generator. Um, and I can actually just charge these batteries back up uh, with the generator. And that generator will run for 12 hours um, on a tank. So we can basically just, we can limp, we can go into limp mode um, on the system. So it's gonna have uh, pretty, pretty neat. I mean, we line input, solar input, generator input. Uh, and that's the point of doing the junction box here. Uh, so that I can have that safety switch and another means for um, power. So I'd probably just come down and then have a little cord dangle in here. That is our emergency uh, emergency cord. So we'll have some more updates there tomorrow. Uh, I've got to go clean up. And um, I was going to take this off the wall or use it to extend down, but I don't like that. It's half inch. Uh, anyway, um, because I'm going to be running 30 amp circuits uh, here. So we're going to, uh, I got three sticks of conduit. I'm going to come up out of that. Uh, and then we're going to, I'm going to kind of go like there and then just go all the way around the room and drop down into the panel and you'll probably do that tomorrow. So just a little update. Um, and it's, it's pretty loud in here. Um, so I did kind of want to get an idea of uh, what this, um, what this, uh, oh, this new microphone operates like, so it's loud right now. So I've got to imagine, um, if I was just using my, uh, cam, uh, camera, a uh, mic on my phone, it would not be, uh, sounding like this. The other, uh, really interesting thing that I found with this is that it makes my battery on my phone last longer. I'm sure it makes sense, but cool. Well, uh, I want to give a shout out to Zippity Doo, Zippity Doo Guy, again. He's my Arista fucking monster. Um, and he did hook me up with the EOL uh, version uh, 4.15.10M, uh, EOL version of this switch. Now, these run 4.18, which is the e uh, EOL. Um, so I'm hoping that there's no issues with IPv6, um, but I can't imagine there will be. So, all right, well, I thank everybody for hanging out with me again. And uh, we'll, uh, we're gonna be doing some uh, weird, weird electrical work. This is a, this is a build your own, uh, build your own UPS. Um, this, I'm, so far, I'm, I haven't spent $1,000 yet. Uh, now, the batteries, obviously, are going to cost about, for, I don't know, maybe 2,000 or so. Um, but if you think about those batteries down there, um, 
if you buy them brand new, they cost 1200 bucks each. So if I can get eight hours out of this for 3000 then it's still a pretty good deal. Um, but I'm going to make it so that I can get a load on it, figure out my uh, math of how many batteries I need. Um, and I might end up having four there, four there, and then four there, four there to make a, um, 16. I just want to be able to get 24 hours on my current equipment. And then the cool part is like, let's say um, I clean my mess up, you know, I bolt another rack onto this. Um, so then we've got a whole other uh, rack and I basically come in, I put some more receptacles in the, um, in the ladder. Uh, then I come over here and I check my, my math on it. Then I just say, hey, uh, because we added X amount of equipment, uh, let's go ahead and let's throw in another uh, four, four batteries. So we're going to start with the eight and then hopefully that every time we add, um, add a rack, we'll basically just add four batteries uh, as the probably the plan. But we could think about this. We could also get up on the roof. When we put our solar panels up there, we'll make provisions so we can add them too. So like, let's say we put four panels up there um, and we add, uh, we're going to add another rack or something of equipment. Well, I could, two options here. I could come, I could get up on the roof, add two more panels, add four more panels. Um, add another battery bank or a combination, you know, either or, or a combination of it. So, um, yeah, this is just an experiment, uh, but based on what I've read and talked to other people and, uh, this makes more sense because think about this, like this is a seven story building. So I'm going to need to get a crane. Uh, we're going to, Hey, we're going to buy the generator. We're going to need to crane it onto the roof. Um, I got to get a gas line up there. Then we have to get gas service put in our name. We're going to be paying for gas, even if we don't use the generator. Then I got to uh, change the oil in it once a year. Uh, then let's say everything went perfect. We just did all that crap and the power goes out, right? I still need batteries. Think about that. So even if we bought a $20,000 generator and spent another 20 grand getting it hooked up, well, I still got to buy batteries, which uh, is crazy. You know, you have to have at least a few minute, seconds, minutes worth of battery to take the flip over um, and then the flip back. So if you're going to buy batteries anyway, let's just get, let's get crazy with it. That's what I'm thinking. So, well, I'm going to uh, go grab a bite to eat. I hope everybody enjoyed.